Hello everybody, welcome to Watch Me Akai, and today we're going to be talking about the lockdown speech that the Prime Minister gave on Monday. I'm going to be stating the facts, and I'm going to be giving my view at the end of it. So, let's get on with it. So as you know, the Prime Minister gave a speech on Monday about easing the lockdown of the coronavirus. That came in six distinct parts, and a few other subsections of, of, of that, as you, as you can imagine. The first section stated a bit of an ease of the lockdown of staying at home. So you wouldn't have to stay at home 100%. You, you could go out to do various activities and various things. The second stage was that could not work from home, would be allowed to go into work. The fourth section was to avoid public transport. He changed the one hour exercise outside to as a limited amount of exercise as he wanted to. Increased the time that you could stay in parks and various venues for as long as you wanted to. But he stated that two meter distancing would definitely have been followed and schools would most probably open around the 1st of June and around that same time he also stated that shops and various other amenities would start to open up again. Now there's a lot to break down in this and um, I'm going to be giving my opinion on that each each aspect of what I think uh, is right and what isn't right and what I feel is is, is happening and uh, yeah now with regards to stay home as much as possible giving people a, a choice in this sort of situation is I don't think the right thing to do at this present moment I mean we are seeing less and less people dying every day but people are still dying in very large amounts uh, of time uh, very large amounts every single day and I'm just worried that he is preemptively doing this is easing because all the countries in Europe are doing the same thing where in which we are nowhere near the same level that, uh, that we are in with regards to working at home if possible combined with the don't take the public transport and do more cycling is in my opinion one of the most ridiculous things I've heard in a very long time of course if you live like him in central London and have a uh, have a multi-million pound house that you can cycle to work then yeah i can understand that that being the case but the majority of those people can work at home in the, uh, in the first place and the people who live further out in london where actual people live is virtually impossible to to cycle in so what will happen is everyone will flood into the underground and spike up the the cases of transferring of these viruses spreading with regards to unlimited exercise outside yeah i can understand that to be honest People did that anyway. I don't know of his delusions of people only being outside for an hour. I look outside. I live across a park. I look outside and there are people there for hours. Picnics, doing whatever the, uh, uh, whatever the hell that they want to. And this combines with the next uh, the next point where he said that you could stay in the park for as long as you wanted to. To be honest, I see why he did this because people were doing it anyway. And he was starting to look a bit ridiculous because there's no way, there is no way he could uh, police this in any way whatsoever. <laughs> Honestly, you, you have a limited amount of police, which he cut by the way. Way. let's just get that uh, that uh, clear to police people and giving them 30 40 pound fines honestly that's not a, det uh, a deterrent now the last uh, the last aspect of keeping the two two meters uh, distance I agree with however he brought a alert system where uh, there are different degrees of how far away you have to be from someone which is as if like this thing is like a smell where if Okay, he's had a shower today, so I can be a meter away from him. Or he's ha he hasn't had a shower for two days, so I can be two meters away from him. It is absolutely ridiculous. I mean, this is a virus, so this is not an aspect of, oh, because less people are getting infected, you can get closer to people. You don't know who is infected. And if you combine with the fact that, that, that England cannot match its testing of people, you don't know if it brings down to a lower uh, rating system so you can get closer. How would you know? that that person isn't one of the people that, that have this virus. And the way that this virus works, it's an exponential type of growth. And I'll explain that in, in the best possible way I can. Now, I talked to a virologist who gave me an analogy of how this virus works. If Boris Johnson relaxes these, these measures sooner than it needs to be, and we will see an immense upsurge in the amount of people that contract this virus and the, the amount of deaths that will uh, that will incur from it. His analogy was was of a famous story that occurred in uh, in uh, central China of a Chinese emperor. This Chinese emperor loved chess, and every time there would be a visitor to his country, he would he would play chess with the person. This one time, a mathematician came to his country and he he challenged him to a game of chess, and he was feeling particularly generous. And he said that if you win, I will give you whatever you want. And the mathematician said this: If I win, I'm a humble person. And all I want is a grain of rice. And the emperor was shocked and he was like, how? Why would you want something so low? But I want it in one specific way. All I want on each square as you go along. So from the first square to add one grain of rice, the second one to add two, the one after that to add four and to double as to double the number of grains 
as the one before. The emperor lost and went to a treasure and said, pay this man his reward. The treasure came back two days and, he's, and he, said to him, uh, he said to him that this amount that this person wants would amount to more than his country and many other countries could produce as a whole. In fact, mathematicians have figured it out. And if you want to visualize how much this would be, imagine a meter high, imagine a meter high amount of rice. And imagine that meter high amount of rice covering all of China. Think of each piece of rice as a uh, person gaining the virus. You kind of see why I am a bit afraid. It was part of the reason why the government brought in this quarantine in the first place. It was part of a report that the Imperial University gave out stating that if we did nothing, this would be the outcome. And it scared a lot of people. Now, what I am worried about, now what I am worried about is that if we relax these aspects too soon, then we're going to be prolonging this uh, this quarantine more than it needs to we are so close to getting to a point where we have things under control that that doing this so soon scares me and to be honest i'm not going to be really following it too much it, it's not the thing that that uh, we should be doing and i think if we waited just a little bit more that uh that we would be good I think we would be get we'll get to a stage where we'll be able to to open things uh, to be able to open things slowly and not have a massive upsurge in this virus. On another note, he stated that, that he's thinking that the schools would open on the first of June as well, which I desperately think is the wrong thing to do, because I don't know if you've ever had, if you've been around a kid that goes to school or to primary school or to any other aspect, or if you have kids yourself. That place is a germ and virus bomb. The the amount and the, the manner in which viruses and illnesses pass uh, from from these type of schools is unbelievable because they always have their hands in the, the, their mouth. They're touching a hundred things. And if one kid ha has it, the whole school has it. And then the whole school goes to a home and then is this massive upsurge again. The only thing that I think that will work in this in this scenario is to wait it out, to wait it out, wait more time be more uh, do far more social distancing don't go out if you just don't go out if you don't need to do your exercise don't need you don't need to go to parties you don't need to do this it's just a small inconvenience in the grand scheme of your life that i don't think it's worth i just want to state that this is my opinion completely my opinion i might be wrong it might be right i don't know you let me know if you agree with what i'm saying press the like button if you don't agree with what i'm saying press uh, the dislike button and if you want to add something to this conversation, please write below and I will answer everyone that, that says what they want to. And but most of all, don't forget to watch me. OK, so we've got to the end. So we've come to the end of the, the video. I would appreciate it if you watch any of the other ones. I do other sort of more happier type of videos as well. More of a reaction videos to funny uh, aspects. Another one will be coming out on, on Friday as well. Um, but I would appreciate it if you would subscribe and press the like button and see where it goes from there. Thank you very much. I'm out.